described. Let me say that again. Love is not defined. And it is described. In other words, you can't say like economics, demand this, la la la, that when you give you definition and you cram it. No, it is described. What that tells you is that it is by this. Scripture says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciple. Description. By what you see. By what is happening. By what you can see, all men will know that you are my disciples. By this. By this. It's not just by the manifestation. So love is not described like faith. Faith is. Alright? says, but love is, is not defined. It is described. Why? Because what people call love is not love. I, I, I believe that love is one of the most misused words in the whole world. It's one of the most misused words. And people, and it's the easiest for people to use. Before you know it, it just comes out of their mouth. I love you. I love you. I love you. And you realize that it is not by what you say. It is by what you do. Okay? It's not by what you say. It's not as much as for your talking. It's about showing it. I hope men are listening. It's not about your talking. It is by showing it. You know, because it's not it's not about assumption. You find some men say, ah, hey, maybe a woman, your wife is asking you. Tell me you love me, or do you even love me? I said, if I don't love you, would I marry you? You should know that I love you. No. For her to be asking, maybe she's not seeing some things on ground, or the things some of the things she's seen on ground is bringing up certain questions in her mind. In other words, the description, the action is not meeting up with the description. It's not the talking. It's not the saying now. You can from money to now say I love you one million times. But you are asking what I'm saying, what is described as love. I'm not saying it. So the woman comes up to ask you and says, do you love me? When last did you tell me you love me? When last, why? He's demanding that. Why? Because what she's saying is not the description of love that she knows. You can't assume it. As I should know, I love you. Even when it comes to parents. Oh, your mom loves you, your dad loves you. That is the normal thing, yes. But haven't you read, haven't you heard some parents maltreating and abusing their children? Haven't you heard some children maltreating and abusing their parents? Okay, so you don't assume it. Or simply, it's, oh, automatically, ah, he's my brother, now he's my sister, I must love him, I must love her. It's not a done deal. It's not a foregone conclusion. There are siblings who hate each other. There are siblings who can't stand the sight of each other. That's not, even some Bible says there are friends closer than a brother. So we don't assume. Those are sentiments. Show me by your actions how much you love not how much you talk not because I said blood is thicker than water and you are my no there are, there are, that's why they call it something sibling rivalry there are places where two, two brothers who are competing one with another it's not automatic you are siblings who hate each other there are children who hate their parents there are parents who hate their children so it is by your actions. It is by what you do. Okay? Now, before we break down love and look at the description, let me, let me, let me explain something. Last Friday, I was giving you an example of, of and I said, Hebrew word, Greek words, 
the, or the Greek language and the Hebrew language are more vast than the English language. The English language is very limited. So when you read scriptures in the Old Testament written with, uh, um, in Hebrew, there are certain words that the English word just use one word, but in Hebrew, there are about two or three words. And I remember using last Friday, I was talking about fear. That if you say, um, if you use the word fear, in different places in the scriptures, they mean different things. If the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, it's not saying dread God. It's not saying have anxiety. What the fear means there is reference. Reference. Okay? There's a word in Hebrew for that. If which we in English translate to mean fear. Okay? So there are other scriptures, okay, that talks about fear. Um, when, for example, in Psalm 23, that says, I will fear no evil. He's not talking about reference. He's talking about, I will not dread any evil. I will not run away from any evil. I will not dread. Terror. That's another word for terror in Hebrew. So, you understand that it, what, that's one of the challenges. Also in New Testament written, Greek and all of that, there are some one word used in English, but they mean differently. They are broken down in Greek. One of it is love. For one word that is used as love in English, there are eight. Yes, eight words. There are eight words in Greek that describes love. And I'm going to quickly break down for you so that you understand that when somebody tells you they love you or when you say you love someone, check it out. Does it fall under this eight? Is it actually the love the Bible talks about in the Bible? Or one of these eight types of love, eight words that are used for love in Greek? One of it that the Bible will talk about and the English word we talk about love is filial. Filial talks about the friendship kind of love. The love you have for your friends. That's filia. Okay? Another one which is very, very common in, in secondary school, primary schools and all of that, or even maybe some people have it in, for people they see afar, is crush. Ludus. In Greek it is called ludus. In English it, you, can, you, you can describe it as crush. I have a crush on someone. You have a crush. It's like a hidden kind of love. It may never materialize. Or more importantly, one of the one of the um, one of the characteristics of a crush is is very temporary. But a lot of people act on crush. I'm going to differentiate it as I go along. A lot of people act on crush. That's why you find a boyfriend and a girlfriend in secondary school and never amounts to anything. Because after secondary school, their love is not enduring. Even after university, even sometimes there are some relationships that they met. Um, for one year, th six months, and that's the end of it. At that moment, oh, I love this girl. Oh, I love this girl. It was a crush that they acted upon. And of course, maybe the girl too got carried away, and then they had whatever they wanted to have, and the 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 the, the guy just moved on. And maybe even the guy is amazed. I don't feel anything for this woman again and for this girl again. That is ludus, a crush. There's another one called storge. Storge is the kind of love you feel among family members. A kind of protective love that you feel that a brother feels to a sister, a sister feels to a brother, family, uh, parents, all of that is storge. That's the kind of love you feel among family members and then there is also one that is called philotia philotia is a selfish kind of love i've met a lot of women who when they describe their men you can see selfishness in what they do 
Selfishness is how they relate with their wives. Even when they do good things to the wife, they are doing it selfishly. For example, you want the attention of your wife, maybe you want need something from her, then you say, okay, let me, let me buy something for her. Let me do something. It's a selfish kind of love. When, let, let, me, let me give out that illustration. Some of us are keep pets. Or we rear animals in Africa and there are chicken and uh, you have goats, you have sheep, you have everything. Some people can fight over their goats, fight over their chicken, don't touch, don't, don't do it. What they are feeling for those pets and animals is because they are thinking of Christmas and Easter so that it will be very big and they will eat it. It's for their own goods. Not, they, don't, they are not protecting the chicken. They are not protecting the fowl for her sake. They are doing it for their sake. And then there's one, number, number five, there's what we call the mania. That's where you take maniac from. The mania kind of love. That one is the obsessive love. The one that leads to jealousy. The one that produces violence. Where did you go to? What are you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Why did you talk to that man? How did you speak to that man? Hey, hey. All that obsession. That's not love. The woman can get carried and say, oh, she, he loves me, he loves me. That is not love. Because some of it lead to violence. You never raise your hand against someone you love or someone you claim to love. Okay? So that's mania. Then there is the pragma kind of love. The, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it slow because I want it to, to sink in as God will help us. There is a pragma. The pragma kind of love is the enduring love. The committed love. Love that has understanding. The long term love. That is a pragma kind. A pragma, the long term kind of love. It's not after one year, the scatter. After two years, after five years, and you're wondering what happened. I thought you could die for each other two years ago. The long term. Marriage is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So you are asking yourself, what is happening? What happened after 10 years? After 15 years? Why? It's a long term. Then, one of the very popular ones, Eros. That's a romantic kind of love. The passionate love. The sexual love. All you think about is to have sex with her. Nothing else. You are not interested in growth or creating a relationship or anything. When you think about her, all you think about is sex. That's Eros. And the woman again will be in error to think because maybe he runs after me for sex, maybe because he runs after me for sex, then he loves me. No. That is simply, that is simply a, 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 an Eros kind of, kind of love. That's a simply kind of, kind of love. Give me a moment, please. All right. Thank you. Then, of course, the most popular, common, and everybody, especially Christians, is the agape love. That is the selfless love. All encompassing. The godly love. That is the selfless love. All encompassing. The Christian love. Now let me say this very quickly. In marriage, yes, thank God for agape. But you see, agape, agape is the kind of love you have even for Christians. In fact, you can have, you are meant to have agape love even for unbelievers. So agape love is a Christ-like kind of love that you have for your fellow human beings. 